This is gonna be easy. For years I've been thinking about this and I finally went and bought some. Overhead deck lights, patio lights, whatever you want to call them. But you know what? Finding the best way to install them and keep them in place, not so easy. I mean, you can kind of throw them up there, but how long are they going to last? I've come up with a solution to stringing these lights with cables and poles that's going to last a lifetime. So let's get to it, and I'll show you all the details. We're putting up two LED strings, 48 feet long, and they're not light. Now I know some people use wooden poles or lightweight poles and they flex a lot. Since this is so heavy, we're gonna kind of engineer this to success so it does well in all wind conditions. So let's go to a top-down shot and I'll show you all the hardware specifics before we go outside and actually do the build. I got these lights at Costco for $59 on sale. I'll post below where you can get a link on Amazon. I'm also going to provide you all the hardware that I used on this build. They're guaranteed for three years. I mean, these are no joke, serious cables. And these are a pretty high quality light. Then you have these little tie-offs here where you can connect it to. So I want to take advantage of all the design features of the lights in order to make the install rock solid. But I'm going to use a three-quarter inch conduit, not a half inch, and one inch is way overkill. I have one inch poles on my sunshade install. I'll post the videos up there and down below. Two hole straps and they'll just go around like that. You'll see it later in the video. Some screws. And then I'm going to drill some holes here and put in these guys. Eye bolts. I'll probably put some nylon lock nuts in instead of the standard issue nuts. And then I'm going to use a little piece of hardware here that I made. I'll show that shortly. And some cable. Got this on Amazon. So much cheaper than anywhere else. It's got a working load of 95 pounds, at least 9, and probably 10 times the weight of the strand. So this is going to work great and it's going to run on tension between the poles, the gazebo, and the house. And this also comes with a bunch of attachments which would cost you another five or ten dollars if you didn't get this kit. Our installation is going to have four eight-foot poles. So we have the ten-foot conduit in a workbench. We're going to cut it at the eight-foot one and a half inch point so that we can have the hole down one and a half inch from the top. For cutting you can use a hacksaw. We happen to have a pipe cutter. You don't need it. The hacksaw works great. You're going to line up this edge and the blade. Make sure that the rollers are flat, and then you just go back and forth and make a groove. Now, if you're not careful, the pipe cutter will travel, and it will make a series of grooves. But see what he's doing right there is doing the right thing, which is making a stable groove, and then he's going to go around. And every time he goes around, he's going to tighten it a little bit, and that cuts further and further into the pipe. You could probably use a little oil here. See how that's traveled a little bit? Now he has to make an adjustment. It's not a big deal. Go to your main first groove. and there's not enough tension then it's going to travel. We just broke it off a little bit. We're going to clean that edge up with a file. We'll put this on the bottom of the post and then we'll drill the hole on the other side. We've got it in an inch and a half. He's made a mark. Now he's going to take this nice little tool and pop it a couple times. Ultimately we're going to work up to a quarter inch hole because that's what this bolt is. Okay now he's going to just drill the pilot hole going to finish it off, flip it around, and do it again. I really think pilot holes help out to make a straighter hole. All right, so we're going to put the eye bolt in, put the nylon lock nut. Now if you wanted to, I guess you could cut down the length of this. Make sure this is straight up and down. Lock it in place. You can always use a screwdriver if you need it to do some minor adjustments. So I'll show you how I made these adapter plates. I've got some half inch heat shrink tubing and some galvanized hanger strap here. Now I doubled it up just because I thought the extra strength would be good and it just so happens that this fits in here rather nicely. Just getting a sense of where the holes are 
and just kind of run them out like that. And then if you want, you can actually take galvanized pieces out, hole punch, and then put them back in. I think that might be the easiest way to do it. So I'll take them both out, get the hole punch, and this just helps you have a nice clean heat shrink. I've never seen this approach before, so you are seeing it here first. So the hole punch makes three really nice holes. Put them back in. Then just get your fire scarecrow. Let's get this a little over here. And shrink the tubing down. And eventually you'll get something like this. Galvanized straps are a little protected from weather, but I just wanted to kind of give them a look to conceal them a little bit. And I'm really happy how this turned out. It's a nice little sandwich, and it will allow the cable to go through and hold tight. The bolt on one side, the cable on the other, when we start stringing the lights. There's a couple challenges with this installation. First of all, we need to deconflict from the sunshade poles, and the lights have to be configured around the shades. I usually would take these shades down. It's Thanksgiving week, believe it or not, although the weather's really nice. So I'm going to run this line, and you'll see it, but all the poles have been installed. The poles are fixed in two places on usually these really beefy ties. Now we'll go up to the deck, and I'll show you some of the other positions of the poles and why we're doing it. So here are the poles for the lights. Here, here, there's one right there, and the one I just showed you. Here's a pro tip I learned the hard way. Wire comes in bundles, and it looks really nice, but what happens when you pop these is you just got a spiral that can go out of control. So I take these little clamps here, and I put those in place before I pop the cable ties, and then I can control the cable. I just let it out, and then when I've got the mount I want, put these guys back on. Works great. I also mark the far end of the wire, so I'm only using one end, ideally the one that's wrapped around on top. This keeps things a little more organized and less confusing. So what I'm doing here is clamping down one end and fixing it. This one happens to be high, that way <laughs> ideally I don't have to mess with this again once I put the eye bolt in place. Now that runs down to the gazebo, and I'll show you the other end. I made this little thing to interface with the gazebo and the cable, and yet protect the cable. And then you just tighten down one end, you pull on really hard on this end, and that gives you a tight wire on which to load up. And if for some reason it's slacking more than you want, you just come in on this end, pull on it a little harder, and reset that screw. So this is great. I like this option here. All right, here's my strategy. We've run all the wires. We're actually going to start the lights right here in this corner. Run it all the way down underneath the roof. Then we're going to pick up this wire here. Run it to the gazebo. Run it all the way down through the gazebo. Pick up this wire right here. <laughs> then this wire. Then that wire. Run it over. Then here's the last wire. And there you go. I've got two boxes of lights, each 48 feet long. That's 96 feet of wiring, of which there are 44 lights. That's why I'm starting up here. That way, if I'm running out of lights, it's going to be this one here next to the house, and the rest of it will be all lit up. Right now, our plan is working. Used eye hooks all the way along the bottom of the roof where there was wooden support. Then we came down this way and ran it on the steel cables. That's working great. Now we've gone through to the gazebo and done the under part there. We've used up the first 48 feet. This is a good place to have a connection because it's under the roof and will be protected in some way from the weather. When you took it out of the box, 
we laid it out on the floor, undid it, and then just put it in this laundry bag so we can snake it out real easy without it getting all snagged up. You can see that we double looped a four inch cable tie there and then we'll cinch it up with a cable tie cutter ideally to get that nice and tight. But here's another view up close of the lights on the wire. And then these are just under the gazebo we're using two eight inch cable ties. You probably could get away with a 12 inch or a 10 inch cable tie. You might be able to do it with one, but eight is just not enough to get around this structure. We've installed all the lights. We had to use a ladder combination here on the stairs so we could get over carefully. The cable is working really well. Now on this part here, this is over our garden and it's about 15, 20 feet down from where we want the cable. So we just decided to take the cable off we have that quick release on the screws and that allows us to install the cable and for some extra strength we just wrap the cable around the electrical wire. Now we'll just put the cable back and our job here will be fairly done. We're outside, got to get to a certain level of darkness in order to show the lights. So what better way to show lights and point them out but with one of these guys. So the lights run down all this way to the gazebo, all the way around. They deconflicted the sunshade, they won't rub up or bounce up when the sunshade moves. Come around here, over the top of this sunshade, under this portion of the sunshade, but a little bit enough clearance, ideally, that it's not going to be a problem. Around here. So the general lighting is pretty good. These are multicolor LEDs, so you can see what they look like. They light up a good bit. There is an app that comes with this, and I'll post up there when I figure it out. That'll be a separate video, but if you just want to plug them in, not use the app, this is what you're going to get. They're going to start with a red flash, and then they'll ultimately go to this multicolor area here. A lot of fun, but I'm looking forward to seeing how you can program them. I think they can do like little racetrack patterns and different colors based on what holiday it is or what you want to celebrate. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Again, that will be a separate video posted up here somewhere. Thumbs up and comments, always appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in installing all sorts of tech gear in your home, home repairs, designs of all kinds, making and breaking things, I even do costumes, cosplay, and props. Check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what you're gonna see.